Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. Three Sentinel satellites have been launched over the past two years for Europe's Copernicus program. The Sentinels provide data on Earth's land, oceans, and atmosphere to help us monitor the environment and support civil security activities. Now with us in the studio today is Josef Aschbacher, who has been with Copernicus since its conception 18 years ago. Now Josef, I'm going to ask you to further introduce yourself, and I'm going to ask you to tell us a bit about your role in Copernicus from the very beginning and how your role has evolved with the evolution of this program. Okay, I'm Joseph Aschbacher. I'm the head of uh, program planning and uh, coordination in the Earth Observation Directorate of ESA. Uh, I have been involved in G GMES, as it was called, Global Monitoring for Environment and Security, uh, from its very first day. Uh, however, rather than talking about myself, let me talk uh, uh, about the program, uh, Copernicus program. Um, Copernicus really started as a very vague idea in 1998. Uh, it was conceived in uh, Bavino, uh, in northern Italy, as a, a, as a vision of uh, how Earth observation can make the next steps and really go a step further from uh, a mostly R&D driven uh, activity as it was in the 90s. So we went to the European Commission uh, and really looked at the various directorate generals and their policies and see how Earth observation could be potentially useful for their purposes. And this was a long exercise, not an easy one, because uh, quite often people would look at us and say, you know, these images are wonderful, but uh, they are a bit fancy and I don't know what to do with them. It's high tech and not exactly what I need because I need very simplified information for my, for my needs. The first uh, real space activity uh, was then defined in 2005 at the ESA Ministerial Conference where we came with the first proposal for the GMES uh, space component, now Copernicus space component, where we defined uh, the first satellites, Sentinels uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as they are known today. Uh, again, it took time to develop them, to fund them, to uh, define them, uh, and uh, now we have uh, launched uh, three of them. I'm very proud to say that uh, after all these years, 18 years you, you mentioned, uh, and a lot of ups and downs uh, in developing the program, uh, we are now at a phase where uh, I think it is fair to say that Europe has developed the best Earth observation program in the world. That's wonderful. Now, of course, with the launch of the first three satellites, what has been the most important impact of Copernicus today? The most important impact is really that we have managed to enlarge the user base drastically and really provide a fully operational program. In fact, what we have done is something that uh, meteorology has been doing for many years already to define uh, an operational program with a long time series of satellites uh, and, and to provide information that is used in, in everyone's uh, daily life. Uh, we all know the meteorology uh, satellites uh, when we see the weather forecast on the TV screen. Uh, we want to do something very similar for environmental monitoring, air quality, uh, the state of the quality of, of water, uh, vegetation coverage, changes of uh, uh, deforestation, for example, agricultural coverage, and so on. So really to conceive uh, a system that provides information about planet Earth, uh, which is useful potentially for everyone. And I think this is, uh, is really great. Uh, what we have done with, uh, for example, Sentinel-1, just to name uh, one example, uh, is to build up these operational uh, services. Uh, to name an example, uh, we have recently done the study of how much, uh, or what would be the impact of Sentinel-1 uh, for a particular application. I, I name one, which is um, uh, ship uh, monitoring in the Baltic Sea. Uh, we have done uh, an assessment and uh, the economic uh, benefit by having better information from Sentinel-1, uh, knowing where the icebergs are and where the ships sh should go or should not go, uh, provides an economic benefit uh, to the shipping industry uh, of roughly uh, 24 to 116 million uh, euros per year. Uh, these are average figures, there's still a wide range of exactly how, uh, what the exact value is, but it shows that more or less 50 million plus minus a million per year can be saved only by the shipping industry by better understanding where they should go or where to avoid places where there's ice coverage and, uh, and they cannot go. So this really shows that this is a very tiny application, the Baltic Sea shipping industry. Okay. Now looking at the most recent satellite launch for Copernicus, Sentinel-3A, it was launched on February 16th. What sort of information will we get from Sentinel-3 and who will that benefit? 
Uh, Sentinel-3 is, um, as the name already indicates, the third one in a row. It really complements the other two uh, Sentinels launched already. Uh, Sentinel-1 is a radar mission. Sentinel-2 is an optical medium resolution mission. Sentinel-3 has actually a number of instruments on board, three sets of instruments, uh, which are monitoring parameters of the ocean surface and the land surface. But really, ocean is, uh, is a priority. And there we get uh, parameters like sea surface temperature, uh, sea level height, uh, but also again ice coverages and uh, information related to the state of the of the oceans uh, globally. Uh, we measure the state of vegetation, agriculture, forestry, for example, uh, and this is uh, again crucial to better understand the the state of our planet uh, and have early warnings, early indications if if something uh, changes drastically. It really seems like the Sentinels are bridging the link between scientific applications and operational applications. Uh, in fact, they do, um, and uh, it, it is a further revolution. Science is absolutely necessary and mandatory to develop uh, new knowledge, new information, but of course you have to translate this into operations, and this is happening with uh, the Sentinels in particular. Uh, one uh, element which I think is crucial for the success of uh, Copernicus is really the free and open data policy. And this is something, uh, I would say, uh, which was difficult to achieve. We have been fighting for it. Uh, but uh, it is really something that uh, defines uh, the way information is provided to everyone. And I think this is uh, one of the key criteria for the success of Copernicus. Now. Aside from the data coming from the Sentinels and of course being used for all these various services, what other contribution has Copernicus made to the European Union? Um, Copernicus is implemented uh, by the European Union together with uh, the European Space Agency. The European Union in fact is, is leading uh, politically uh, the program, uh, but ESA uh, has really uh, always uh, been um, providing uh, essential support, if not leading the space component uh, of, uh, of Copernicus. In fact, ESA is the, the coordinator of the space component, as the, the, the term is called, between the European Union and ESA relationship. So ESA is, uh, in, in short, leading the space part. The European Union is leading the political process and the services part. But together, uh, this is really a good synthesis how this can work. Uh, I think uh, uh, the Copernicus program is a very good example how Europe can work and how Europe can work at its best uh, if the institutions work together. Well, Josef, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about the Copernicus program, you can go to our website at www.esa.int/copernicus.